live from New York. It's your Yu-Gi-Oh! News, news Gio, with your host, Davidator1212. Good evening, I am Davidator1212, and, two, and this is a special election report of news Gio. Democracy has swept our nation yet again this Tuesday, as the votes are in on our next Yugi card president. And by nation, I of course mean my Discord. <laughs> the polls were open, long and hard, and deep. But the democracy of my Discord held firm and finally elected a Yugi president. The original ballot consisted of 10 entries, which managed to get onto the ballot after a swift and decisive primary process, where everyone in the Discord just yelled names until we just picked like 10. And once those 10 were decided, the polls opened and the voting commenced. So this is your top 5 Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you would vote for to be president. Number 5, Spiral Master Plan. Spiral Master Plan just eked herself into the top 5, barely beating out some stiff competitors, but nonetheless, I do believe is a solid pick. As the former head of the Spiral Intelligence Agency, National Security was a very strong part of her platform. The other strong thing about her was clearly all the hairspray to keep that beehive up there. Whoa, keep your side deck in that thing. However, no amount of ada ada and please step on me mommy could get Spiral Master plan to take the top spot, which my election experts have attributed to her time on the ban list. Her incarceration has clearly hurt her poll numbers, despite the fact she's had a stellar track record in the competitive scene. Being a level 7 dark spellcaster means she can be abused by things that should have been for dark magician only for some reason, allowing a once tier 0 deck to shine once again for some mild tier 1 success at a much later time. Just goes to show you that when the TCG makes archetypes, they're either really, really bad or really, really broke. There is, there is no in between with these things. Number four, El Shadal Construct. The showing for El Shadal Construct during the primary voting process was extremely strong. However, when it got to the national ballot, it seems that the fact that she is some sort of strange dark golem creature with no actual real sentience was probably hurting her polling numbers. Most people do not seem to want to elect a, a mindless automaton for their president, at least intentionally. <laughs> oh, uh, this was supposed to be a joke video. I. I, uh, <clears throat> I, I didn't realize that the political satire would be so on point and cutting. Construct still managed to have a semi-decent showing, despite the fact that uh, I'm pretty sure she's just a large puppet of some kind, which, uh, again, not a great thing for a president. <laughs> These strong numbers most likely attributed to the fact that she does still to this day have a strong base of supporters. They're always one more support card away, aren't they, shit all players? Always one more away. Third place in the polls and runner-up to the vice presidency, if we're doing old school uh, American rules where the person who just came in second got to be vice president. Did you know that used to, that used to be a thing? Karibo. This small round plush puffball, ancient fan favorite and one of the first hand traps in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Being able to turn some damage to zero certainly means that this card has seen some competitive play, at least back in the old school days of the game, and is that track record that has this card polling very well in the Yugi Boomer category. However, the younger generation has never even used this thing outside of something like Duel Links, so they did not seem to vote as strongly for our Dust Bunny here. It seems his political platform at stopping battle damage is just a bit too archaic for the modern era of Yu-Gi-Oh! when we have much more powerful hand traps that didn't decide to run on the ballot this year, which may have done actually a bit better in the polling with the younger Yugi crowd. However, as a third party candidate, I must give it to Karibo, for he had an absolute solid showing, despite the fact he is running on a bit archaic of a platform. Certain political theory seems to think that maybe his running mate of Curry Bandit was probably a poor choice. And in a massive upset, Dante, Traveler of the Burning Abyss, managed to only come in second in the polls. Early in the polling, he was carrying the popular vote, but eventually was overcome by our first party candidate. Local pretty boy Dante has had an impressive tenure in the game, showing that the TCG exclusive archetypes can certainly be 
very competitive. And when properly constructed, those decks can actually be quite hard to take out of the competitive scene altogether. Not to mention that he mills for cost, that's just dumb. Setting up the deck's graveyard as well as giving you access to a 2500 beat stick if the need arises means that Dante is just the perfect engine card for his strategy. His solid deck design and his clear affinity for the ladies had him pull very well with the newer Yu-Gi-Oh crowd, but the older Yu-Gi-Oh crowd seemed to dislike him, calling his deck gatekeeping and power creeping. However, I feel these are the same people that probably complained about Synchro Summoning, so take that as you will. And before we get to our number one spot, we did have one honorable mention that I feel I should at least bring up for you at home. Coming in absolutely dead last with only one right in vote, but nonetheless, the cutest candidate on the ballot at all, Melfi Rabby. <laughs> Little tie. Melfi Rabby's platform promises to thump out crime, ear to the ground to get our economy a good hop start. He's just so cutest. And as a dishonorable mention, just getting eked out by Spiral Master Plan is Gimmick Puppet Egghead. Nobody likes a smarty pants elitist who is too high in his ivory towers to hear what the common man thinks. One does hope that he does not fall off said ivory tower because I don't think all the king's horses and all the king's men <laughs> could put him back together again. <laughs> also, he just looks stupid and no puppets, no electing puppets. Just extending a special thanks to Metamats for sending me all these really dope samples. The channel wouldn't be possible without support by them as well as all the subscription from you guys. So why don't you go show them some love and use my promo code troll the meta at checkout to get 10% off your custom cloth playmat. And be on the lookout for this dope Burning Abyss playmat by Amanda LaPalm. And the major upset for this election has to come down to our number one spot, Ojama Knight. It's not a great card, it's part of a meme deck, and I'm pretty sure he carried very well in the meme vote. This is precisely why, in real elections, they don't let us use our phones, because they think us dumb millennials and zoomers will just vote for the dumb thing. Thanks for proving the boomers right, guys. Ojama Knight can't even be president. He holds a, 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 a title of a, of a knight, which would imply a, a title of a foreign a nation, like England or France, some that has knights, which means I think it must now just default to Dante. But nah, you guys had to write in, you know, goofball here and ruin the whole democratic process. He seems like a nice guy, though. You could probably get a beer with him. All right, viewers, that was the top five cards that you guys would want to vote for for Yugi President. I know this is not my normal news geo format, but uh, I, given the vaguely <laughs> political <laughs> joke about the whole thing, I thought this setup would actually make a little bit more sense. But anyway, remember, guys, if you don't troll the meadow who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.